All right, uh, here we got problem number three. Um, we've got situation, right, set up. We've got a blue particle on the x-axis, or sorry, at the origin, um, which we know the charge of, it's positive Q, uh, and it is fixed in place. We have a red particle that is at D1 comma zero, right, some distance on the x-axis, and we know nothing about it, right, we don't know its charge. And we have a supposed to be yellow charge, but I didn't have a yellow expo, I'm so sorry. Uh, please forgive me. Um, so I made a green, which is made of blue and yellow, so it's half right. Um, so green, Q, also unknown, we don't know what it is. And what we want to do is eventually, right, figure out the sign of both charges. We want to know what is the charge of the red particle and what is the charge of the yellow particle. Um, and so we're going to have to do a little bit of math to figure it out, or a little bit of, uh, not necessarily math, but critical thinking. Um, the other thing we know is that the total force on the blue particle is downwards uh, in the y direction. Right? It's have, it has a value of f, and it's in the negative uh, y direction. So if we look at the positive blue charge individually, right, um, we know what the total force should be on it. Right? We know the total force is downward, right, F. We have to come up with component forces uh, from the other two charges that we'll be able to add together to get F, right? We want them to add together to get F. So our first one is the charge on the uh, red sphere, right? What's the charge on the red sphere? And um, I think we kind of have to answer both questions uh, separately, or simultaneously, not separately, simultaneously here. And I think it's actually easier to look at the uh, yellow slash green charge first uh, because it just makes more sense. So what are our possibilities for the sign of the charge, right? It has to be positive or it has to be negative. So if we take positive um, or if we predict positive, right? Let's predict positive. If we predict that the green yellow uh, particle is positive, that would mean the green particle and the blue particle would repel each other, right? They would repel, and the green particle would be pushing the blue particle in the positive left direction, right? Up into the left. So it would be applying the force this way, right? The green charge would apply a force that way, which would mean our red charge would have to try and figure out a way to cancel this force and get a force that ends up uh, down that way. And the only way we can have that happen, right, if we know a little bit about uh, pictorial vector summation, right, summing vectors as pictures, uh, we use the tip to tail method. So to get from here uh, down to here, we would have to have the red particle exert a force in that direction, the negative uh, I guess down into the right, right? Negative y, positive x direction. Um, and that right there can't happen. It's just not possible. The only two choices, right? Because our red particle is on the x axis, it's only two choices, right? If it's positive, it's going to push the blue particle to the left. If it's negative, it's going to pull the blue particle to the right, right? So right and left are the only options for our red charge, um, positive or negative. So we'll never be able to get a vector that goes down into the left from this red charge. So our first prediction, right, where Q for the green particle is positive and it applies a force up into the right, it's just never going to work, right? It's not, it's not possible. We'll never get uh, our red charge to apply a force in this direction. Um, it's, it's just it's not going to happen. So. What does that mean the charge of our yellow particle is? Well, if it's not positive, then it has to be negative. So if it's negative, it's going to apply an attractive force, right? It's going to pull the blue force towards it. So it'll apply a force in that direction, right? So it'll apply a force in the negative uh, y positive x direction. And now 
right? If we look at our red force, can we get back to F with a line that is on the X axis? Yeah, we can, right? Our red force could apply a force this way. And then adding our vectors, right? Force vector from yellow, force vector from red, tip to tail, we can get back to F, right? And we can uh, get to our total force. So we know the yellow Q has to be negative because we need it to apply attractive force so that it has that downward F component. Um, and then our Q, right? In order to apply a force to the left, which is what we see here is what we need to get back to our total force, uh, that means that Q, red Q, has to be positive, right? Because it's going to repel. So our red charge has to be positive and our yellow charge has to be negative. So let me answer those two quick because there's another part. Red is going to be positive, submit, nailed it. Oh, I skipped part A. Uh, yellow, we said negative, submit, nailed it. Part C, suppose the magnitude of the charge on the yellow sphere is determined to be 2Q. Calculate the charge of the red sphere. Express your answer in terms of Q, D1, D2, and theta. So now we're working with um, a little bit more of a force calculation problem, right? We want to say that the red charge is not just negative. We know specifically that it is negative 2Q. So we know this is negative 2Q. Now we want to determine what is the red charge. So uh, when we're looking at analyzing the forces here, right, uh, because the red charge exerts a force in the x direction, I think it's pertinent to uh, analyze the x direction first. So let's take a look at the x direction. So some of the forces in the x direction, we will have um, the red charge, right? So the force from red, which we know is in the positive x direction, and the force from yellow. Now, not the total force from yellow, because how did I lose the green marker? Oh, I found it. Not the total force from yellow, because uh, we're just analyzing the x direction. So we want the x component of, actually, this is in the negative direction. You guys are just going to let me, this is negative. All right, the yellow force, if we look at its components, it has a component in the x direction and a component in the y direction. This is positive x, this is negative y. Uh, so we can add the force of the yellow in specifically the x direction. And when we add those together, we should get zero. Why do we end up with zero as their total? Well, if we look at the resultant force for our blue particle, our blue charge, it feels a force, a total force in the downward y direction, which means the total force has no x component, right? And if the total force has no x component, that means our uh, x component forces have to cancel out, right? So we know there's a red force and it's in the x direction. We know the yellow force has part of it in the x direction, but if our total in the x direction is zero, then those two have to cancel. So our red and yellow components cancel, and we end up with a total of zero. So now we've got something to work with uh, that we can start to uh, solve. So our red force is going to be K um, Q. Then we have an unknown Q, so I'm going to call it just capital Q, right? So this is our unknown right there. That's what we're trying to solve for. Divided by D1 squared, that's negative. And if we look at the yellow, we'll have plus K. We know the other one is 2Q, so 2Q times the blue charge is just positive Q divided by the distance is uh, D2 squared. 
And now because we're using the X component, right, we want to pick out the X, uh, theta, theta goes here, which means our X component is a cosine, right? Adjacent, so times the cosine of theta equals zero. And now we're just doing algebra to isolate our variable and solve, right? And we want in terms of Q, D1, D2, and theta. So we're in the right terms already too. Um, we can subtract our, I'm gonna start working in just the same color because I'm gonna start getting, getting confused. So negative K, Q, unknown Q, divided by D1 squared. We subtract this whole quantity to the other side. So equals negative K, 2Q squared, right? Because Q times Q is Q squared, divided by D2 squared, times the cosine of theta. Uh, they both have a negative, so we can make that positive. They both have a K, so we can cancel the K. Uh, we've got a Q on each side, so we can cancel one of the Qs. Right? We, can't, we can't cancel both Qs, but we can cancel one of the Qs. Um, and now, we just have to Right, the only thing left over here is the D1 squared. So we multiply that over and we'll get Q is equal to, and this is the red charge that we're looking for, is equal to um, 2Q D1 squared over D2 squared times the cosine of theta. And there's our answer in terms of Q, D1, D2, and theta, right? That answer will vary based on where uh, the yellow particle actually is in space, right? The farther it is away, the weaker that charge can be and uh, the less we have to worry about. So there is our answer in terms of Q, D1, D2, and theta. And action. I mean, whoop, no, we're